Hey everyone, it's David Sirota. So one question that's come up with the Trump administration and the revolving door is whether you think it's better for the proverbial fox to be in the hen house. What I mean is, is it better to have somebody running a government agency who has experience in the industries that the agency oversees, or is, it, is that a problem? Is that a, a problem where you have what's known as regulatory capture? where somebody from an industry then goes and runs the government agency that oversees that industry and the problem being that the regulator could be easy on the industry that they came from. It's a big debate and it's a debate that, play, that it will probably play out in the debate over who should head the Internal Revenue Service. This is a really important story because the IRS of course has so much power to enforce or not enforce the nation's tax laws. President Trump is reportedly planning to nominate as the IRS director a guy named Chuck Reddick. Uh, Chuck Reddick has experience uh, in essentially helping uh, advise tax clients uh, in part on how to lower their tax burden. Uh, and in 2005, uh, Reddick, as TYT Investigates has reported, Reddick publicly defended a tax sheltering practice called the S Corporation Charitable Contribution Strategy. Uh, it's basically, as TYT Investigates has reported, it's basically where a company donates shares to a tax-exempt entity and then buys them back several years later and that basically maximizes capital gains. Now, Reddick had promoted that in a, a quote to the LA Times back in 2005. Uh, Reddick, again, comes out of the industry that helps advise clients on how to uh, avoid or lower their tax burden. So there's a debate. Is it, do you want somebody at the head of the IRS who knows about tax, uh, tax schemes, uh, ways to get around taxes and the like? Is that a good thing to have the top tax regulator uh, who has that institutional knowledge and that they can put it to use in enforcing the nation's tax laws? Or is it not such a good thing? Is it, is it a situation in which the regulator is going to go easy on people who avoid taxes because that's the industry that that person came out of? In this case, Reddick, again, is on record, uh, on record basically defending a specific way to get around taxes. In the LA Times, he wrote, quote, the tax result may be highly objectionable objectionable to the IRS, but as a technical matter, many knowledgeable practitioners are convinced it will be upheld in litigation. So he was basically taking, it seems to be taking something of a position, saying that that while this may be objectionable, this specific tax scheme uh, that he uh, was commenting on may be objectionable, he's sort of suggesting it's probably, it's probably okay. So this is l less of a situation where the regulator uh, comes out of the industry and more where the potential regulator has an actual position uh, on these issues. Now when you look at the IRS, uh, the fact that Trump is um, considering a, a nominating a person like Reddick out of that industry, this has become now part of a pattern. Because the IRS, let's not forget, is run right now by a guy named David Cowder. And David Cowder came from Ernst & Young, a company that paid $123 million to avoid criminal prosecution for devising tax avoidance schemes. That's who's the acting IRS commissioner now. And this is really interesting because it really does suggest that this is the kind of person Trump is looking for to head the IRS. Uh, when Cowder was at Ernst & Young, the firm developed schemes to help clients avoid paying the amount that they owed to the IRS. Uh, we at International Business Times reported some of this. Uh, between 1999 and 2002, Ernst develops tax shelter products for 200 wealthy clients that helped hide $2 billion in tax liabilities, according to a 2013 Justice Department press release. Cowder wasn't implicated in the tax dodge scheme, uh, but four of those involved were sentenced uh, to, to jail time. Uh, in, two, in August, when the, the Senate Finance Committee confirmed him as Assistant Treasury Secretary, Cowder said he, quote, should have been more uh, active, unquote, in, in, in uncovering these schemes. Uh, Cowder, according to a, a separate report, The Intercept, was included in email chains at Ernst regarding some of the tax avoidance efforts. So clearly Trump is looking for somebody who, at the IRS, who understands some of these schemes. But I, again, the, the debate is whether it's with Cowder or Reddick. And the thing to keep in your mind is, do you want somebody in a top regulatory role who, uh, who comes out of the industry being regulated, 
uh, because that person will, in theory, put that institutional knowledge to work for the public in strongly enforcing these laws? Or do you not want somebody like that in a top regulatory role because they are captive to that industry. In the case of Reddick, he, he appears to, at least in one instance, have taken a position in, 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 in defending uh, a tax avoidance scheme. Uh, and so, th look, this is a huge issue because the IRS is so powerful. I mean, we have a situation now where separate from the tax cuts, uh, just basic IRS policy on enforcing or not enforcing tax policy uh, has implications for tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in potential government revenue or lost government revenue for public priorities. Uh, when the IRS goes easy, it can mean a lack of resources if ultimately uh, for the basic programs that, that run the government. It can, it can exacerbate the deficit. I mean, there are statistics about how big the so-called tax gap is between what, Amer what Americans owe, Americans and American companies, what they owe technically, and what they are paying. Uh, in, in a situation where the Trump administration has already passed a huge tax cut that is going to add one and a half trillion dollars to the deficit, how strongly the existing tax laws get, uh, get enforced is a huge issue uh, that it, at, at a cost uh, of, of tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars. And so watch this potential nomination. Trump hasn't said he's definitely going to nominate uh, Chuck Reddick, but it's coming down the pike as TYT has, has reported. And these questions about whether you want somebody from the industry at the top of, of that agency, this is something with huge financial implications uh, for the economy, for government revenues, and for the